Hey, this is TNBC here to talk a little bit about night vision. Um, one of the questions we get a lot is basically single tube versus dual tube. Uh, everyone sees pictures of operators on Instagram and other social media uh, using dual tube goggles and uh, they're asking, hey, is this worth the money? Uh, if you're new to night vision, if you've never used it before, uh, there's a lot of options out there. The most ubiquitous night vision goggle is probably the PVS-14. This is a single tube goggle. It's going to go over one eye. You can do left or right. Uh, the J-Arm basically allows you to, uh, to switch that on the fly. But um, you know, a dual tube goggle is going to basically double that up. It's going to have two independent um, optic pods and uh, you're going to get a tube for each eye. So we're going to have a little discussion here about the difference between dual, uh, single, you know, is it worth the money if you're not using this professionally? Um, so I've got uh, Don and uh, Sam here with me, and uh, we're pretty much the guys that make things happen at TNBC. So let's get the discussion going. All right. Hey, um, I'm going to say right off the bat, the biggest reason to go with the PBS 14 is economics. I'd agree. It's uh, they're very common. You know, we we say they're ubiquitous. I told people they're the, they're it's the, the Glock, Glock nineteen, Glock nineteen of the night vision world. <laughs> you know, you can accessorize it in many ways, and it's just very useful. You can do a lot of things with a monocular like this. You can adapt it to work with a camera. You can use it as just a handheld monocular carried around in a pouch. You don't have to wear it on your helmet. You keep in a cargo pocket, yeah. so a little pocket scope that right. uh, is good for surveillance on target or. Uh, if you're in a blind or something like that, and you're just wanting to observe your your field for animals coming yeah, in, yeah, we've got we've got cell phone adapters so that you can put it on and and uh, and take pictures and videos using that. There's even a color adapter for it now. Yeah, so yeah. there's a lot of lot of things you can do with it. Well, let's yeah. let's also talk about what this unit is not though, because a lot of people call me up and they're like, I want to do this and this and this with my PVS 14. I'm like. Sorry, sir. It's not a clip-on night vision device. It's not a standalone scope. It doesn't have a reticle. Um, it's not recoil rated to your, you know, 458 SOCOM or your 300 Win Mag. Right. Um, it is. It is a great monocular when you use it as God intended it to be. But when you start getting outside of its um, operating envelope, it, it quickly shows uh, what it. Now, is I mean, it, it can be mounted on, on it, an AR. It can be yeah. mounted. We generally don't recommend that as the <clears throat> as a primary option. Yeah, there's a couple reasons why I personally don't recommend uh, weapon mounting a PVS-14. I mean, the whole idea of weapon mounting a PVS-14 it it came about from the military, but in all reality. Um, it was one of those things where someone had the idea, of, oh, what else can we do with this thing? Um, it was a, kind of embraced by the, uh, the, the civilian market uh, quite a bit because in all reality, there were no IR lasers available for a long time. Now we've got class one lasers, everyone can get it, keep it on your, uh, your head and uh, use the laser for aiming. But um, when you get down to brass tacks with the PVS-14, it was designed to be the standard issue goggle for the United States military. And that means it's going to be on your head 99.9% .9 of the time. Uh, you can still get behind a red dot or a, a day scope or something like that while it's on your head. Uh, you're, you're going to want to raise that optic up a little bit more to, to make it easier to get behind. But, um, you know, putting it on the gun, you're now marrying your ability to see in the dark. That's the whole purpose of using night vision, right? So you're marrying your ability to see in the dark with the muzzle and you're going to get kind of sucked into that image as you're moving the gun around and chances are you're going to end up covering something that you're yeah. not you've got to destroyed. point the gun at whatever you want to look at exactly you're exactly. negating all the the um advantages the 14 gives you by placing it on a gun and in all reality the <clears throat> housing itself i mean you, you start talking about tubes the, the image tubes aren't designed at, at least filmed uh traditional legacy filmed image tubes are not really designed for uh recoil so uh weapon optics have purpose-built shock mitigation systems and, and other things that are uh, gonna keep the tube safe from various recoil. Uh, the tube itself, a standard film tube, is really only designed to take 5.56 recoil. That's, that's pushing the envelope of it. Um, but, you know, let's say you get into some of the unfilmed tubes. Unfilmed tubes, innate, are, um, they, they, they can withstand a lot more recoil, but even if you have an unfilmed white phosphor tube in a standard PVS-14 housing like this, um, the housing is not designed to take that kind of recoil. So in all reality, there's a lot of reasons in you know, today's day and age to not put this on your, your gun. 
Um, keeping it on the head allows you uh, much better situational awareness. It gives you uh, the ability to keep the gun slung or at a low ready if you're uh, a hunter and you're out stalking your prey. Um, you know, you're, you're able to look with, with your head wherever your head goes, the goggle's gonna go. So, you know, in that vein, why not have dual tubes? Um, with uh, Don's point about uh, economics, obviously you're gonna pay twice as much for this as you are for that. Or more. Or more, uh, depending on what the system's gonna do. So, um, you know, talking about situ uh, situational awareness, um, with dual tube goggles, you know, what, what are we looking at here as far as uh, spatial awareness and uh, depth perception? So depth perception is actually not something that's innate as, as a human being. Um, we are not born with depth, depth perception. It is just that, it is a perception. It's how our mind is, uh, is perceiving space around us. And it's learned. It's, it's a learned skill. If you watch a child, a, a toddler, walking up to the coffee table and they're gonna pick one of their toys up off the coffee table, um, it's more of a gross motion. They're gonna kind of throw their whole body into it and grab something and push it and then, you know, eventually grasp it when they feel it in their hands because they have not yet fully understood depth perception. At that point, um, you know, we're, we're looking at being able to use fine motor skill to, you know, very gently pick something up. We know as adults that if we're looking down the street at, uh, at a person standing at the corner a block away, we know that they're not, you know, two inches tall, but that's because we understand, we've learned uh, throughout our personal experiences, depth perception. So it's not that the dual tubes are gonna give you depth perception, they're gonna increase your spatial awareness so that your brain can more easily process, more quickly process that. So Don, you were talking a little bit before uh, we, we got started about uh, the, the, the quickness in uh, being able to understand environment with duals versus singles. Yeah, right, well, uh, you know, and, that, and that's, you know, we, we do have this discussion a lot. One, one of the pros to having only one eye under under night vision is is your other eye still sees what anybody right. without night vision would see. So you may see shadows that you might miss otherwise. Or if you're trying to stay hidden, you see places where you should maybe get into the shadows if you're trying to utilize those and, and utilize mm -hmm. that light to rain and stuff like that. So so those are some of the arguments in favor of of keeping one eye unaided, as as we say. But right. having both eyes um, aided with night vision with eye, eye squared gives you, gives each eye that, that constant information, that, that um, intelligence that you need to make decisions quickly. You know, we were talking about the PBS-7 back in the day, which seemed like a good idea at the time, and it's one image with, with mirrors, basically, and you're, each eye is seeing that same image. You know, that, that's why, you know, it's actually even a little bit worse than, than this, because your, your brain's thinking that it's seeing, you know, that each eye is operating the way they're designed to operate and seeing information sure. but in reality it's seeing one image being blended together you know for or being split apart for each eye so being able to process information faster I think gives us the ability to um, I, I guess I say perceive depth perception which may be an oxymoron but we feel like we can move faster but I think it's really because we can think and make those decisions quicker because there's no doubt that wearing these going through a shoot house moving around in an urban or even a rural environment you know you're a lot more sure-footed you know, yep. you, can, you can reach out and grab things. Things are a lot more natural. And Negotiate and obstacles, climbing ladders, I think um, it's mostly, doors. Yeah, right. I think it's Driving. mostly because your, your brain is, is operating more along the same lines as it does during the daytime. It's getting all that information and it's processing it. And, it, and it's a learned skill, you know. Yeah, I mean, and to Sam's point, um, one of the things that, uh, that we get a lot uh, I, I feel a lot of phone calls from guys that are hunters. Um, you know, if you got a ranch or a lot of property that, that you're covering for hog hunting or coyote hunting or something like that, chances are you're driving in a truck, you got a gator, a four wheeler, or something like that. If you're driving, the ability to understand the space around you faster, obviously you're moving at a, a much faster clip than just taking a casual night stroll. So, um, when you're driving, um, having dual tubes is, in my opinion, almost a must. I mean, if you only have single tubes available to you, uh, you know, say military or law enforcement, you get your gear issued to you, 
uh, unless, you know, as a cop, you're buying it out of your own pocket for duty use. But um, if it's issued to you, then you use what you got. But if you've got the ability to go, you know, dual or single tube, um, then, and, and you're going to be driving quite a bit, then dual tubes all the way. I mean, if, if it's within your budget, and that's, you know, that, that's one of those things that um, I, I always say, look, always buy the best you can afford because you'll always regret it later if you don't. You know, we're, we're guys, we like our toys and we like uh, nice toys. And in all reality, when you're talking about night vision, um, the, the better stuff, I, I hate to say it, but you gotta pay to play. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you get down to it- You get what you pay for too. You, you absolutely get what you pay for. So having the, the ability, uh, having dual tubes, in, in my opinion, um, I mean, I, I rarely go back to using a single. Um, these days, if I'm using a, a single tube, it's because it's in my pocket, you know, and I'm just using it to observe something and, you know, maybe I have a thermal scope on the gun or something like that. If you, if anybody has a choice, 99% of the people are going to grab a dual tube system over a monocular. Guys experience. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> yeah. Um, so hopefully, you know, we were able to give you a little bit of information there as to, you know, I mean, honestly, this is a conversation that probably all three of us have with customers on the phone or on forums and email every day, Daily. multiple times. Daily. So uh, hopefully this gives you some more information that uh, you can use to make a decision on what's going to be best for your mission, whether it's hunting, you know, animals or hunting bad guys. So or just uh, playing around on the range. Yeah. Hey, I mean, like I said, boys and our toys, and this is fun stuff. So uh, thanks for tuning in and uh, be sure to check out some of our other videos on YouTube.